Uh, so guys, we are just here to start to just take a recap on MS Excel. Uh, this is Vikas, Vikas Singh, technical trainer at Brailika Services. So, so let's start with the introduction of the MS Excel. First of all, we'll understand what is MS Excel and what is the importance of MS Excel nowadays. Uh, you can send data analytics or any other fields also. In normal days, normal working an office environment, what are, are, you can say all are the purpose, different type of purpose you can say. Excel can be used for the uh, data handling and uh, purpose of the data analytics, filtration, data cleaning, MS Excel. So it's a product of Microsoft, a prominent company nowadays in the world for IT, for tech. So it's a dealing company, Microsoft Corporation. And it has multiple products. Uh, this company is basically working on software development. So it has a package that is MS Office and that is dedicatedly uh, developed for the office purpose. So different type of works that can be handled by the MS Office. It has multiple applications, multiple softwares like MS Word that is used for the documentation, for the document work like resume building, like notes creation, and you can say uh, like uh, C, like biodata. And this type of work, this type of document work, you can perform using MS Word. So this is also a big word processor nowadays, the most popular big processor, big word processor, the part of the MS Office. So in MS Office, we have multiple types of software. We have multiple softwares. So the first one is MS Word that is used for the documentation. And another one is MS Excel that we will be discussing in this class. So you can say MS Excel is a spreadsheet program, spreadsheet program or application that is purposely used for the billing, budget creation, salary sheet, mark sheet. And uh, you can say account maintenance also. Okay. So you can handle database also in a small scale. Uh, if you're going to large scale for the data handling, we have different type of software like Oracle, like SQL Server. And in MS Office, we have MS Access. MS Access. Okay. But in a small scale, you can say you can also manage and handle all type of databases in Excel also, just because of Excel is a flat database management system also, flat database management system. In database, in database management, uh, we have three types of main database handling steps, like how you can create a database, how to create a database, and how to update a database, and how to delete a database. These are, you can say, uh, umbrella term for the management in database, in database case. So management means how to create a database, how to update a database, and how to delete a database. So as I said, if you have a lot of data, uh, you can say big data, a large amount of data, for the different type of management, you can use MS Access. And for unlimited data, you can use Oracle, SQL Server also. But if you have flat type of database, see, because in database, you can say multiple types of other, like a flat database, flat database, and uh, relational database, relational database, document database, networking database, radical database, distributed database, and so on. So multiple types of other. Uh, if you talk about the flat database, in which we have a spreadsheet that can be used for the data handling also. We have some kind of rows and columns and cells. We can put our data and we can make some type of columns with the different data types. So easily we can manage flat database in MS Excel. That's why MS Excel is more relevant in database handling and in data analytics also. So if you talk about data analytics project, uh, in roadmap, you can say roadmap, 
of the data analytics project. Data analytics project. First of all, we have to collect database. This is the first step of data analytics. We have to collect it. So database collection. With that, we have to study all, all type of data. Means uh, relevant or context with the problem. We have to study all given data by the client. So the first is still data collection. Second is the data study you can say. Study about data. And with that, we have to uh, clear understanding about the business also. So business understanding, business study. This is also the step of data analytical project. So first of all, we have to collect data and we have to check that all the data we have collected that are relevant with the problem or context or not. If the given data is not relevant with the problem or not relevant with the context of the problem, then we have to recollect data from the client. After the collection of the data, as we know, data is just like a crude oil. Uh, like you can say uh, about crude oil, you have to refine the crude oil before to use. Same goes with the data. We always collect a raw data. The raw data means without any structure, without any pre-information, just a data, just a data. This is called raw data with some type of you know discrepancies and errors and mistakes. So these type of data is called raw data. That is, uh, you can say, uh, like uh, comparatively like a crude oil. So before to use, we have to refine it. And the refine process is goes with the data study, business study, and the third step is data cleaning also. So in data cleaning step, we have to normalize the data. After the cleaning of the, uh, this step is also called data cleansing, data cleaning, or data dogging. There are multiple names are there for this step. So in somehow, it is also called EDA, the process EDA, exploratory data analysis. Data analysis. So EDA, in this step, we have to clean the data. There are multiple types of mistakes like outliers, outliers. Uh, in a column, in a data, we have some values that are uh, far from the, uh, you can say, mean of that data. So outlier, uh, you can say mean is uh, directly changeable with the outliers. Just because of outliers change the uh, average value of the total data, say total data points. So outlier is just like a problem for the data. So we have to clean uh, with the outliers of data. And also we have uh, some type of discrepancies like spelling mistakes. So you can say discrepancies and some mistakes, some duplicacy, redundancy, duplicacy, duplicate values. You can duplicate values. So these type of errors can be removed, first of all, in the EDA process. Then we'll go for the data analysis system, analysis system. Analyze and find out some insights find out some insights. This is basically the final step. This is basically the purpose of that project. So we have to find out some insights. Insights, so you can say hidden facts or patterns. Uh, this is the uh, step of knowledge discovery that are hidden on data. So we have to collect raw data, then we have to clean that data. And uh, finally, in third or fourth step, you can say we have to find out some insights from that data. This is called analytical step. And after, after finding all type of insights, in fifth step, we have visualization. Visualization. So if we talk about data collection and, and uh, business study, data study, and data cleaning, we can use Excel, MS Excel. If we have a small scale data, means this is not a big data. If we have a big data, we will go for Tableau and Power BI and Python also. But if we have a small scale type of data for small businesses, we can use MS Excel for all these type of steps. Okay. So in CSV format or in Excel format, we will be data, some type of data we will collect. And after that, we'll study all the data, then we'll perform data cleaning steps in Excel. So multiple types of options are there in Excel. We are just going to discuss all the things so that we can clean the data and then perform analytical steps and then visualize data 
uh, visualization and the context of you can see charts and graphs we will present this is basically a presentation of your outcomes just because of uh, the human brain thinks in pictures and we also can uh, easily explain all the things in pictures and we can also get all the things easily in pictures so visualization is the last step will be last step so here we are just going to uh, excel introduction that was the importance and introduction of this excel and uh, you can say we have another software in microsoft office like powerpoint and access and outlook express front page publisher and so on but we have to study about ms excel so we are just going to start ms excel so if you open i think you know how to open ms excel and this is the window of ms excel first of all we have a title bar and which we can show the uh, the program name that is excel and the file name also that is book 11 this is called title bar after that, we have uh, some tabs like home, insert, reload, these are the tabs. And with every tabs, we have multiple options are there that are you know spread out here in a strip that is called ribbon. So in this ribbon, we have multiple options related to that tab, like home, like insert, like page layout, like formulas, data, really. So if we talk about the home tab, we have multiple options for uh, data formatting and uh, conditional formatting and number handling and so on. So uh, we can take a look on advanced option just because of we have a limited time, we have a crunch of time. So we cannot explore all the things from minor level to major level, but we will perform some steps on, uh, you can say, on study on the basis of the assignment. So we'll go with the assignments and uh, some advanced options like conditional formatting, like paste is special, like go to special, like uh, functions like VLOOKUP and the XLOOKUP and offset and so on, and macros. So it uh, will be just like a recap of MS Excel. If you know uh, about the Excel, then you will get some recap. And if you don't know anything about the Excel, you will get some information about the Excel. So Suchita and Akansha and Garma, I think everything is clear and you're connected with me? Yeah, it's clear. Yeah, sorry, okay. okay. So, first of all, we'll discuss conditional formatting in, in home tab. Or we can start from the paste special also. See, uh, we have some data like uh, and some value dot. So if you're copying the data from this location and which is on to paste it in another location, you can directly paste control. It will paste all the things in this way. But when you are copying the data, before to paste, you can click on paste special. And this is the option, paste special. And after the clicking and that option, you can see there are multiple options are there. You can decide what we are just going to paste. Means uh, in this data, we have multiple types of things like formatting, color, design, size, and formula also. See, uh, we can add all the things using some function, select all the values and hit enter. So in this value, you can say we have a formula of sum. So if you are copying that data, and I'm going to paste it, in paste special, we have multiple options. That will decide what to paste. Means if you want to paste only formula, then we can select formula. And this is the default setting also. Means if you are not selected anything, then it will paste the formula. And if you have values without any formula, it will paste all the values. So if you want the values only without any formula, it will print values. First of all, you can take formulas and click on that. So you are pasting these values and we have uh, taken a formula also. So it will paste the formula and on the basis of the formula, it will add all the values. Suppose, select 15, copy it and put it here with the selection of formulas option and see you will get zero. But here we are copying 15, now here we are getting zero just because of we are pasting the formula only, not value. And in this formula, it is adding above four or five values, four or five cells. So if you want to paste 15 only, then after the copy, 
you have to paste it with the value. Like you can select values and click on OK. So you will get 15. So this is the paste special, the beauty of paste special. You can uh, target the particular type of uh, item for the paste, for the paste option. So what you can uh, paste, like copy. And if you want to paste formats only, uh, select formats and you can paste. We can add some comments also from the review tab. So if you want to paste only comments, then you can select it. And the validation option that is available on data tab. If your data has some type of validation, you can paste it. Means if you want to paste only validation, then you can select validation and click on OK. And same goes with other options also. If you want to paste some source theme and border and column width, the number format and uh, formula values in number formats. So you can select accordingly. Um, this is a well predefined actually. You can see and you can check. Uh, we have to discuss about values operations. So type is a value type 45, 67 and copy, copy some value like five. You can copy and put here and just paste. You will see it will overwrite 67 and will put five just because of we are pasting directly. So this is the default setting. But if you want to paste this value with this value by adding, you can select paste special option and you can take the add option by selection and click on OK. And you will see it will add 67 with 5. So this is not overwriting now. This is adding previous value with current value with this uh, value of the cell. So you can perform this type of operation also using paste special. You can add this value with current value, like copy and put a cursor and select the type of operation like multiply, divide, subtract, add, whatever you want. Click on multiply and the cell OK. And you will see it will multiply. So these type of operations you can perform using paste special. And some other options are there, like select. So create an instance first of all. We are putting line line and line. here we can put it black and uh, that is also no problem. So copy this and put the cursor directly paste it. And you will see it will overwrite all the things and will paste all the things as it is. Means it is copying this space also, this blank cell also, and pasting it. And we have another option. See, you will see the difference. Select and copy it and just put the cursor and click in paste spatial. Then you can select skip blank and click on OK. And you will see if there is a blank, it will avoid this number. So just because of if uh, in copy data, you have blank cells, it will be uh, blank here also at the time of the pasting. So if we have some value at there and this place, it will be remain after the pasting also. And if we are directly pasting it, say it will paste the blank also, then it will remove the previous value of that place. So this is also a beauty of paste special option. You can avoid, you can uh, paste, accept the blanks. We are pasting some values, but it is avoiding the uh, blank cells. So we can accept the blank cells at the time of the pasting of the values. So another options you can say, like we have a data set in this way, a salary sheet. A salary sheet, you can copy that, copy and put the cursor at the target place, then click on paste special and select transpose option. So transpose is a option, is an option you can say that can change rows into column and column into rows. So if you're clicking on OK, it will get some data by transposing. See, in this data set, we have some headers in a row. So every column has a header, a heading data. And it will be in the first row of that data. 
And if we are converting it into rows, into column and column into rows, then you will see all the headers are, head, headings are in a single column. So in this way, uh, in different of name, all the names are there in front of city, all the cities are there. Uh, so this is basically called horizontal data, horizontal data. Further, we have a function also to fetch some data from the horizontal data, that is HLOOKUP. So if you want to fetch some data from horizontal data, uh, you can use HLOOKUP. And this is called vertical data, where we have vertically aligned all the values and heading at the heading is uh, at the top of the row. So this is vertical data, and we can apply VLOOKUP to fetching some type of data um, from this data. So using VLOOKUP, we'll see in lookup function in formula tab VLOOKUP. So. A last option that is also important. If we are copying this value in this location, before to paste it, paste is special. In paste is special, you can select paste link. So we can put this data by paste link option. And the use of this option is if we are going to change this cell, it will change automatically. So this is the target the source value. This is the source data, you can say, and this is the target data. If you are changing in source data, it will change, it will reflect automatically into target data also. So this is the beauty of paste link in paste spatial. You can link both data, copy data and paste data. So you can create a link between both of them. So I think that will be enough for the paste spatial. Now, for the selected area, for the selected area, like we have selected, uh, take a new sheet, sheet two. Hmm. So for the selected area, you can apply some formatting on the basis of the given condition, like select some area uh, from 1 to 10 and up to decon. So this is your selected area in which you just want to apply some type of formatting on the basis of the given condition, which type of condition we are just going to discuss about it. So first of all, select all the data and click on conditional formatting. We have highlight cell rules top bottom rules, data bars, and color scale also. Icon sets, so uh, you can take highlight cell rules. So in this option, we have first option that is greater than. So if we click on that, you can see format cells that are greater than. You can apply a value, you can put a value, and it will apply given this type of formatting on the basis of this value, and the formula is greater than. So if we are putting 100, that means for greater than 100, all the values will get this type of formatting. Which type of formatting you can select? We can select it. So light red fill with dark red or yellow or any type of formatting. If you want to further any other setting, you can click on custom format over there and select from here, like fill with yellow or any color or any formatting. Click on OK. So now the command is if you are putting some values over there in the selected area, if the value will be greater than 100, it will change it into yellow. This is the formatting. And this is the conditional formatting, just because of we are applying the formatting on the basis of the given condition. So click on OK. And here uh, you can put a value like 50, like 30, like 20, and so on. And see, 101. It will change the color fill color of this cell just because of we have given already a condition. So this type of formatting is called conditional formatting. We have some formatting on the basis of the given condition. So you can apply multiple type of conditions like less than, like between, see, like we want to put 
are conditioned from 40 to 100. From 40 to 100. So what type of formatting you just want to apply? You can select red text or anything. Red text, okay. 1 to 100. So see, we have red color text just because of we have applied. So in this cell, in this selected area, we have applied two conditional formatting. You can check it. Click on manage rules and you can see the selected range and the condition. You can delete this type of condition from here. Select this and delete the rule. So this is called rule. We are deleting it. And again, you can apply by selection, like in between, uh, in between, you can select from uh, one to 50, one to 50. See, light red fill with dark red text. So click on OK and you will see. Between 1 to 100, we have different type of formatting and between greater than 100, we have different type of formatting and it is applying all the formatting on the basis of the given condition. So, select all the values and if you want to clear all the formatting, just click on clear rules, clear or selected or entire sheet from the entire sheet. So, you can click on select. So, we have many types of conditions are there. You can see highlight rules equal to, you can apply for the equal value also. And if you want to apply some uh, some conditions for the text, then you can click here. Text that contains. So text, which type of text you just want to highlight, hello. And light red, okay. Type some text here. Okay. And you type hello. Hello. And you can see. This is the format. This is not a formatting. This is actually the font setting. We have applied previously. You can remove it. So this is font setting. This is not a conditional font. So now we can select again it and then uh, select text that contains to apply some conditions on text. And if you want to apply some conditions on dates, you can select a date occurring. If you highlight duplicate values, you can select duplicate values. Like, first of all, remove all the options from the selected area. And now we are typing some values like uh, 40, 50, 50, something like yeah. So, select all the values. Select all the values. And additional formatting. We want to highlight all the duplicate values. Click here and it will highlight all the duplicate values. Now, if you want to highlight unique values, you can change it from duplicate to unique, select unique, and it will highlight all the unique values. So, in this way, you can highlight uh, duplicate values or unique values. So, click here and clear, clear on the selected area. So Chetna, turn off your mic, please. Chetna, Chetna Joshi. So is everything is okay, guys? Akansha, Suchita, yes, Any doubt, any question? Okay, in next step, you can select this data and click on additional formatting. We have top bottom rules also. If you want to highlight top 10 values, see we have limited values. I think we have 10 values. So we can select top 8 values, top 5 values, top 3 values, top 1 values. In this way, you can highlight, you can apply some formatting for top values, top 1, top 2, top 3, top 4, these. And the next, if you want to highlight all the values that are above from the average of this value, see, first of all, calculate the average. So this is the function that can calculate the average of selected numbers. And this is the average of these numbers. Okay. So 260 is the average. Now, 
uh, you can click top bottom rules and you can select uh, above average option. So uh, it will highlight all the values that are greater than to 60.3. Just because of this is the average and we are highlighting all the values that are greater than average value of these rules. So it is highlighting all the values that are greater than this. Same goes with below range. If you want to highlight all the values that are below 260 or average value, it will highlight all the values that are greater than, that are less than 260. So in this way, you can use conditional formatting. We have another multiple options like gradient design, gradient color. See, you can apply any color. Select like blue, like yellow. See, in all those selected values, it will see which one is the greatest value, like 878 is the greatest value. So it will consider it full, uh, full uh, width of the cell. So it will fill our color in full cell. That means this is the biggest value of this range. And according to that, it will consider it 100%. And according to that, the respect of this cell, the respect of the cell, it will fill the color to another cell also. So you can see uh, these values, these values and these will almost 50% or uh, greater than 50%. So it is filling more than 50% area of that cell. Just because of it is considering this value as a 100% of this. So it is filling this cell also 100%. And rest of the values are with the respect of this value. So this, uh, in this way, you can fill the color also for different type of values. Clear rules and color bars also there. See, and icons also there. We have three, three types of icons. So in this, using this icon, we can categorize all the values in three level. Lowest values, moderate values, and top values. So you can see by the average, by the setting, We'll see uh, which type of average are there. But according to the average, if you have greatest value that is 878, it will highlight with the green color. And the lowest values are highlighted with the red. And rest of the values have yellow color. So you can arrange, click on sort. You can sort all the values. Click on sort. Continue with the current selection or expanded selection. Doesn't matter just because of we have only one column. Select C column and click here. Conditional formatting icon. And it will show the conditional formatting icon. So uh, we just want to green color on top. You can select and add another layer. In C column, select conditional formatting and select red for on bottom. So in this way, you can sort all the values. Ascending or descending order and click on OK. See, it will arrange the green color at the top and uh, yellow color in between and after that lowest values are. So uh, you can change the values like we are changing it to the 50 and see, it will convert it to red. Again, we can arrange it using uh, a sort option. So type 100 or type 500, 1500. So with respect to these values, this is the biggest value. So that's why it is showing it with the green color. So in this way, you can apply arrows also, icons also, and clear, clear rules from selected cells, icons. So multiple options are there. You can select any of them according to your choice or according to the appearance of the document. You have to decide. So that was the, uh, you can say, advanced option of home tab. And we have another options that are, you can say, merge, wrap text, number format. See, guys, uh, we have covered home tab, I think so. But uh, at this time, this is your call. If you want to ask any question from the home tab, you just want to discuss anything from the home tab, you can discuss, you can ask the question. Hello. If you have any type of questions on home tab, you can ask with me, you can discuss with me. No, sir. Okay. 
move to next. In insert tab, you can say uh, pivot table and charts are the most important thing in advanced things in Excel. So first of all, we'll see pivot, pivot table. What is pivot table? An advanced option, advanced Excel option of the advanced Excel. That is used for the summarizing maintenance and management of the large scale data. Like if you have a big table and if you want to manage and summarize all the data in a very simple way, with the high level of filtration power, you can use pivot table. See the definition. It is showing you easily arrange and summarize complex data in a pivot table. You can double click. Uh, so if you talk about the summarization of data, big data or large table, you can use pivot table. This is the simplest way and strongest way, well-featured way to manage, to arrange, to organize, and to summarize a big data, a complex data in Excel. So, see, this is the data we have. We can select this data. We can select this data. And we can apply the conditional, uh, sorry, pivot table on that data. So, so click on that pivot table option. And from table range, table range, we have already selected the data. Now, we just want to put pivot table. So we have to select the area. We have to click on existing sheet or new sheet and put the cursor here. You can select any cell. Like we want to put the pivot table here, you can select this cell or any location, any, any different sheet also. So click on OK and you will see an area for the pivot table. And in right side, we have a pan, we have a field set, a list in which we can see all the columns. See name, city, post, basic salary, TA, DA, HRA, PF, total salary and grade. Now in below, in this area, you will find four types of options, filter, column and rows and values. So for the filtration, you can select name. If you are clicking on that name, you will see all the names are there in list. And with the name, so suppose we just want to find out according to the city or according to the post, you can select post. It will summarize the data. See, we have repeated post like clerk, 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 clerk. In a pivot table, all the clerk will be summarized and collected, consolidate in a single cell. And it will show whatever if you want basic salary, TA, DA of clerks. So you can select basic salary. It will accumulate, it will collect all the values and it will show in front of clerk, all the clerk salary, basic salary. Same way you can uh, select TA, DA or HRA and see. It will show the summarized result using pivot table of the data. So this is called pivot table with the high level filtration power. You can change the formula also. You can click here, click, and from the value field setting, you can select and uh, you can change the name of the column. See sum of TA. You can change the formula like count, average. If you want to show the average of that column, you can select the average and click on OK. It will show the average. So according to that, we can change the function also. We can change the name of that field also. And we can make the copy of that uh, option also. Like if you want to show the average and sum both, then you can put this column again below that selected value. So average of TA and sum of TA. Here it is showing both of them. So we have a column that is TA and we just want to uh, show the sum and average of TA. It will create, it can create actually, it can create the column for different purpose of same column, same column and different purpose. Like if you want to create basic salary average also, you can again copy it here. Just click, hold and drag and put here, drop here. It will create another option. So sum of basic salary, sum of basic salary. And in second one, in second one, you can click and value field setting can change the function for average. Now it is showing the average of the basic salary. So in this column, we are getting 
a sum of the salary and in this column we are getting average of the salary so in this way you can create multiple columns for a same for a single column for different purpose so this is the beauty of the uh, you can say pivot table now according to city if you want to filter the data select the city and put it in filter option and see in filter option we have city now it is showing here at the top of this pivot table and by clicking on this button you can select any of them like if you want to show only Haridwar data or Kanpur data or Lucknow data you can select any of them click on ok it will show the date of Kanpur only and if you want to select multiple cities you can click select multiple items you can select multiple cities and click on ok and see so in this way you can filter the data using pivot table i think this is clear if you want to delete it select and select the delete option press the delete button it will delete the pivot table So I think you can create this table. Hello. Yes, sir. Can you create this table, Chetna? Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. No problem. I'm just asking. I'm not going to give it. So now just uh, we are moving to the formula tab. Okay. And some I will take some overview on formulas. Like uh, lookup assignment we have. Suppose we have a data and we can apply some average, max, mean, and this type of functions. So if you want to fetch some special type of value on the basis of the given sorry row name and column name you can use we lookup function we are applying here not here this is so first of all focus on unit one only first of all focus one unit one we are going to apply the lookup function on unit one only so equal sign we look up just because of we have vertical data vertical data means i told you in uh, previous hours uh, uh, if you have the vertical data means data is organized in a vertical form in a column and uh, heading is at the top of the row so this is called vertical data and for that we can apply we look up function to fetch any values so in a we look up function there is an you can say uh, an argument that is lookup value. So it will look up the value from this data by giving a value that is available on the left column of that given data. Just because of lookup works from left to right. So first of all, we have to provide a value like Vikas, we just want to fetch the uh, math, the marks of the max, maths of Vikas. So we have to provide the name and in this cell, we are going to apply the lookup function. So in lookup value, we will select I-17. This is a lookup value. And on the basis of this value, this lookup value, it will search the value on this area. So we have to select table array. We have to select all the values of this area. And then column index number. So uh, you can say for the counting in maths, we have one, two, three, four, fourth number, column number four. And you can write zero for exact match and hit enter. You will get at the C, the marks of the cast from the math. So in this way, you can apply VLOOKUP function and C. Now, if you want to apply the uh, subject name also dynamically, like we can change the name, we can change the name Ram, it will change dynamically. So this is the dynamic changes. 
this type of data. So we are changing the name dynamically. Same, we just want to change the subject name also. Suppose we want to write the subject name here and according to the subject and name, we just want to print, we just want to fetch the value. Like in this case, Arjun 73, it will give 73. But it is changing only on the basis of the given name. It is not considering the subject name. So we can apply something on that function so that it can consider the subject also. So we look a function. First of all, look a value that is available on I-17. Then select table array. See, this is table array. And column index number. Now we have an, an, a function that is match. And this function can provide the index number of a value by giving an array. See, first of all, match function will take, match function will take a lookup value that is in the comma. Give an array in which match function will search the index number of in the. So this is the array. This is the array. Select all the subject name. All the column name had a row basically of the data. So this is the lookup array in which it will search the lookup value for getting the index number. So now you can apply, you can give zero for the exact match after again zero for the view lookup and then that. now it is given seven. So now you can dynamically change the subject English and dynamically you can change the name also. So this is two-way lookup. We can apply both of them dynamically and it will search the value from this data. And the last lookup type, and this you can say we have three-way three, three lookup. So we have three unit, like unit one, unit two, unit three. We have three units. So we can type the unit name also to fetch data. Like if uh, you type unit 2, it will return the marks of Raju from English column from the unit 2. Sorry, from there. So this is unit 2, this is unit 3, this is unit 1. Now we are providing third dimension, that is unit, to fetch the value. So if you want to add third dimension also, we have another function that is choose. We have to combine. We have to nest this function also within the VLOOKUP. So let's see how it works, how it goes. First of all, we'll see only choose function. Apply sum. See, apart from the VLOOKUP, apart from the VLOOKUP, we are just trying to understand choose function only. Okay. So uh, first of all, will see choose function, apply choose function. So this function will take an index number. This function will take an index number and according to that index number will return some value. Like in this cell, if you are typing one or any value you can say, it will return 100 or 200 or 300 or 400 or any value you can provide. According to these numbers, it will return. It will provide some index number like for 1, it is showing 100, for 2, it is showing 200, and for 3, it is showing 300. In this way, it can return a value according to the index number. So this is the beauty. This is the functionality of the choose function. It can take index number, and according to the index number, it can return a value. So we have five values. So we can provide five number also, five sequence number also. And according to given number, it will re uh, return a value. So this is the we look, uh, sorry, choose function. And we can apply this function within this function. So match function will return the column index number. But for the table array, for which uh, table array we are just going to fetch the value, we can apply choose function. Just because of we have three range. First unit one, unit two, unit three. So before match function, before match function, we can apply choose function to select the selected range, to select the range. 
So in choose function, in choose function, we have to apply if if function also. Just because of we have to understand the unit, unit one, unit two, unit three by this cell. So we'll provide this cell and we'll check if equal is unit one, then return index one. If again, if apply if, if in this cell we have unit two, then return. If we have unit two, then return two, otherwise return three. So if function will return one, two, three, and for this value, one, two, three, we can provide range. So range, first range is this, second range is this, and third range is this. So it will return the index number. According to that, we can apply the range function. And some error are there, I think so. Let me check if unit one, one, if unit two, if. <clears throat> Unit one, two, three. We look up I seventy. Okay, no Mr. Blind. We look up. We look up. Look up value available in I seventy. Then table array. For the table array, we have to apply choose function. And for the index number, we have to apply if. If will select this cell. If it is equal to the unit one, then return one. If in this cell. We have unit two, one written two. Otherwise, written three. And if if comma for first, for second number, index number, and for third index number. Okay. <laughs> now close the choose function. And after uh, completion of the table array, we have to. Provide column index number. And for that, you can apply match function. Look a value from this cell. Table array. Take an array. And apply zero for exact match. After that, after that match function, apply zero again and that's it. So dynamically we can change unit also for unit three, C. And for unit two and for unit one. And for subject also, like total. And for name also, like more. So it will return more total marks from the unit one. So in this way, you can apply three way lookup items. Is it clear, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we have covered match function and lookup, choose. And these are the, you can say, main and most important functions for the data analytics. We have a lot of functions are there, like text, date, time, lookup, mathematical. Okay, so if you just want to discuss any type of function, any function from this list, you can discuss with me. Anyone? Otherwise, we can move further. So, logical wala bata do ek bar. In logical functions, we have and, false, if, if, error, if, any, and so on. 
So main functions are there and, or, not, if error, and if. if. So see, first of all, we'll apply if function. Like uh, we can find the percentage. We can find the percentage in this column. So you can apply a function like uh, number into 100 divided by total. So we have three subjects. We can apply 300, hit enter, and you can drag it. Now we have percentage of all the students. And now if you want to apply a condition, a final result, then you can apply if, if function. So all the logical functions are based on conditions. Like given condition, you can apply any type of condition. So if you apply, if it will take first of all a logical text, that is basically it's all about condition. So which type of condition you are just going to apply. So we are going to apply a condition on percentage, like we can select this cell and if this uh, value of this cell is greater than 75%, we can say this is pass or you can say 60%. Uh, it can be considered as pass and otherwise it will be considered as fail. So this is the simple if statement that will result, that will return a result on the basis of the given condition. So you can see everyone is pass. <laughs> See, he is failing. Possibly, I'm just failing something. So, uh, we have two strings that are based on this condition is falling on this part. So, the, we have three arguments in if condition. First, the argument is just taking a condition, and according to this condition, if condition is true, it will return this one, and if condition is fail, it will return this one. So in this way, you can apply condition or uh, for the grade also, you can provide grade. So you can use multiple if conditions. So for grade, you can use this column. Now, if condition and check this value, if this value is equal sign if, if this value is greater than 75%, you can apply it. This is considered as first in the class. And again, you can apply if select F2 and again check if the, if the value is greater than 60, it will be considered as second. And again, apply if and if I, uh, sorry, F2, F2 is greater than 45, it will be considered as third, greatest third position. And if all the given condition are false, then it will return fail. And you can close, you have to close all the brackets like first, second, third. So close all the brackets and hit enter. So you can see first, second, and third. It is showing the first, second, and third. Great. So in this way, you can apply nesting, a nesting case. If this condition is true, it will return first. And apart from that, we have another condition. If you are giving, uh, it will return true for this condition, it will return second. And for this condition, it will return third. And if all given condition are false, then it will return the fail. So you can apply in this way. This is the if, if function, a type of logical function. All the functions are in the, uh, you can say use all the logical functions working in this way. So like and, we have and. If you have multiple conditions, if you have multiple conditions, and can take multiple conditions and will return true if all given conditions are true, and it will return false if any given condition is false. So suppose we have a value, this, and I'm saying that this is greater than this. So this condition is true. Again, we are providing another condition that is this condition, if this value is less than this, and this value is greater than this. So we have three conditions. We have three conditions, one, two, and three. And all given conditions are true, then it will return true. And see, we are changing first condition, the second condition, any of the given condition into false, and it will return false just because of only one condition. So if any condition is false and will return false, 
So the condition for the true is all the condition should be true. And in same way, we have another function that is or. It can also condition. It means it always works two or more than two conditions, and it can return true if any condition is true. Like this condition, this is greater than hundred. This is first condition, and this value is less than fifty. This is another condition that is false, and this is greater than this is less than zero. This is another condition also false. Then it will return false just because of all given three condition are false, but. We can turn it into false, oh, sorry, true. Now, we are seeing that V10 value that is 91 is less than 100 and this condition is true. Even we have both condition, both further condition are false, but just because of first condition is true, it will return true, see. So, in or, uh, this is the condition that only one condition uh, can be true. Uh, but it can be one or two or three or all conditions are true, but minimum one condition is compulsory for the true condition. So if all uh, if any condition is true, then it will return true. If all condition is given false, then it will return false. And in, in the AND case, we have all given condition are true for the true condition. If any condition is false, it will return false. So I think you're getting the point. Making sense, guys? Yes, sir. We have another logical function that is not. Not takes only one condition and will return false if condition is true and will return true if condition is false. That means not is just like a converter, just like an inverter. It inverts the result. Like in this value, if it is greater than this, so I know and we know that the condition is false. We are saying that 43 is greater than 63, that is false. But we are providing this condition to the not, then it will invert it to the true. See. So it can turn true into false and false into true. So this is that's why it is called the unary operator also and unary function also. And uh, you can say a logical function, inverter or converter. That inverse the uh, Just like we have if, we can also apply the count function with if, the sum function with if, like sum if. So in sum if, we can provide a range that can be added. So it will add all the values. But we have a condition, we have a criteria. So after the applying a comma, we can provide a condition within the quotation. So we can set a condition like less than, less than, less than, less than 200, less than 200. Okay, less than 200. So this is the criteria. We just want to add all the values that are less than true. So it will add all the values that are less than true. See, 495. And here, sum if again in this range, we just want to add all the values that are greater than 200. See, greater than 200, it will show another result all the values that are greater than 200. Okay, yes, sir. Now, you can apply count ifs, count ifs. So in count ifs, we can apply multiple criteria for multiple, sorry, count if for sum ifs. First of all, we'll see sum ifs, sum ifs. So we want to, we want to add this range. Now, uh, we have multiple criteria with the connected criteria, with the connected columns like uh, city or post or name. So, take a comma and select the criteria range just because of, uh, in this case, we have a criteria, but in different column. So, the criteria is in this area, this column. So, we have to select this column for the criteria range 1. 
after this selection of this column, we can apply criteria like select the criteria. So the criteria is we want to add only clerk salary, clerk TA. Now, so some ranges in another column and criteria ranges in another column. So we are providing two areas. First area for the addition, first area for second area for the criteria. So this is the criteria range and this is the criteria and this is the sum range. And hit enter. It will add all the values in front of clerk. 500, 800, 1400, and 14. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Now, we can apply another criteria also. Like uh, we have a criteria according to the city, just want to add all the clerks that are from the country. So, add a comma and select the second criteria. And again, type the criteria like country. And then, so, five. So, I think. We have only one person that are from Kanpur and his clerk. So it is written five. So in this way, you can apply some ifs and some ifs. Some if and some ifs. And in same way, we can apply count if and count ifs also, like count if. Okay. Select values or select clerk directly, uh, post directly. And comma, comma, select the criteria. Plus, see, there are four values. And for count tips, criteria range, post, comma, criteria one, plus. And again, criteria range to city. Form criteria that is can't do. We have only one person who is clerk and from can't. Any other function? Garima, you have also studied Excel, right? Yes, sir. I have also studied But just to brush up all these skills again. Actually, I have a six years of experience, but there is a huge gap in my career, around nine years. So I just want to brush up all these That's why I joined this class. Got it. I think the discussion was that I have also studied Excel. You have college or college, you have experience, right? Management no, 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 no. I have a corporate art experience. Okay. So, like, till 2013, I was with, with corporate, like, uh, tele, I was with telecom industry. Okay. But uh, now I am resume my career again. So, just want to move in a data analytics. So, that's why. So, you were in my batch? No, no, no. Uh, uh, I never joined uh, your batch. This is my first interaction with you. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Shall I yeah. Maybe there's uh, another Garima. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had inquiry about the data analytic course with, uh, like uh, Brilika, but uh, I didn't get any opportunity to join the classes. And, like uh, there is something going on. So now I'm thinking to join in the next one or two months. So, <laughs> and where are you from? I'm from Dehradun only, but uh, mm -hmm. currently I'm settled in Canada. Okay. So now uh, I'm here for a month uh, in Dehradun, okay. so I thought let's join a class and so I'll get an idea now, like uh, how the class is going on and how the 
So that's why I joined this. So maybe in a couple, one or two months, I'll join the whole data analytics course. So I'll be back uh, on uh, last month, uh, last of this month. So I need to actually a weekend batches like there is some difference of time zone. So I I need accordingly. Hmm. So this is just a, you can say a fast track batch for the just recap. So if you know all the things about the Excel, then it will be beneficial for you. Yes, yes, that's why I joined this webinar, Excel webinar, so just to brush up all this. I'm aware about all these uh, logics and the functions, formula, pivot chart, but I need uh, some more practice on these. Mm -hmm. Just because of gap. <laughs> yeah, there's a huge gap, actually. And it's very difficult to justify last six years, <laughs> the work of work yeah, and so this gap. gap. Yes. Actually, earlier I was in the networking side, network operations. So, and uh, but uh, at this time, it's very difficult to uh, go in uh, again that the operation side and all mm -hmm. networking side because there is a shift. There would be a shift in my profile, and um, I'm around the age of thirty eight, so it's difficult to manage. So I thought let's move in the data analytics is a it's a boom in a market so it's like and easy to grasp all these things but it's networking like product hello Garima I think you disconnected hello okay it's now yes now no, yeah yes it's a yeah, so it's a difficult to gain or to read and to brush up all these skills of networking because a lot of products in the market. Mm -hmm. Certification has been changed, so it's very difficult to revise data, networks, voice, wi wireless. And obviously, you know. nowadays, data analytics and data yeah. is in a boom. Yes, and yeah, it's in a boom, so it's better to start with a scratch and easy to like uh, i'm uh, working on a sql okay my, you are yeah. working on sql uh, no on not in a working just uh, i'm just uh, doing a small small projects okay to brush up my sql so it's mm -hmm. like uh, just go through once i'll go through all the ones and then i'll join the class because it's easy to understand if i'll uh, take an any webinar or any classes. Mm -hmm. but if I go from the scratch, go will go from the zero. So it's it's not worth mm -hmm. to join it's the class. Time taking. Yeah, it will be time taking. So it's better just read once all the content and then join the class. So it's I guess it's it would be revision for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So. Okay. Yes. So let's go back to the point. Yeah, please do it. So now we have another option that is name manager. We can define a name for the selected area. Like uh, you can select this area and you can provide a name to that area. And you can call that uh, on any function within the function or any uh, any out of that sheet, or you can say, or any area of that workbook for different purposes. So first of all, provide a name, like you can use define name also, type a name, or you can type the name here also. This is the name box. This is the name box for the selected area or for the selected cell also. So if we are selecting this area and we are clicking here, we are providing just a name to that area and hit enter. Now, this area is named as XP. So here we are applying a function that is sum and you can directly use xp that means there is no need to select all these values directly using a name you can select all the values because we have provided a name so this is the beauty of this naming system in this excel you can provide name define name and use in the formula so if you have many names are there for the different type of area different type of ranges you can select the name if you don't remember the name then you can select the name of that area from this location. Uh, in name manager, you can change, you can delete, like you can update it, edit, 
delete, or uh, if you want to create a new one, then you can select from it. So delete selected range, you can delete from it. So this is the name and another one that is trace precedent and trace dependent value. So first of all, we'll create some value. Now, we add some value like this, like this, and this one also. And take another one, this one, or this one. And last one. So now we are adding some values here. Again, here we can add some another value. Select this one plus this one plus this one. See. Now, if you want to check that in this value, what are the values are added, then you can select it and click on press precedent value. So it will show all the values that are added in this, this cell by uh, using arrows. In this way, you can check the connectivity of a cell with different cells. And if you want to remove the arrows, you can click on Boom. And same if you want to check the dependency of a single value on the formulas, on different formulas, you can click trace dependent. So it will show in which values this trace dependent. So this is the trace dependent and another uh, options are there show formula, like it will show all the formulas in the same cell. Error checking and formula evaluation. If you want to check these steps, you can click here and evaluate. It will show that in first cell, we have nine and again in five and after next step, it will add and after the third step, it will add another value that is C29, that is 4 in C29. So this is the evaluation step. You can check from the evaluation formula. So this type of options are there, but uh, we can move in data app. You have another important and advanced options to check. Advanced filters, like uh, we can copy the header and we can paste it. Again, we can apply a formula, apply a condition here, like we are putting some condition greater than 95, 90,000, suppose 90. So now you can select this data, click on advanced filter and Select the criteria range. So criteria is this. Select this. Now, uh, if you want to filter here only, then you can click directly. It will filter all the values that are greater than 90,000. And if you want to fetch all the values from this data and to put into another location, then advance, criteria range, select, and copy to another location and select copy to and give give a location and click on open. So it will show both values, both records or all the records that are relevant to the page. So in this way, you can use advanced, advanced filter to filter some values to apply some condition. You can delete. Here. Yeah. In data, we have text to column, like if in a single cell, we have uh, many words, a long string, like honesty is the worst words. So this sentence is in a single cell. And now we just want to split it into different cells. Then you can select and click on text to column. So we have two options to convert it into different cell. Uh, first option that is delimited means if your data has different type of delimiters, like comma, space, inverted comma, or any other symbol like dash, you can mention it. 
So like in we have in this data, we have space. So we can select a space. We just want to split this data from the space. So you can select space and click on next and finish. It will convert, it will split the data from the space, space position and will change, will convert it into different cells. So in this way, you can split, uh, you can split a data. Another way is fixed way. You can set an arrow, you can set an arrow. Like we have honesty is the best policy. Now we just want to put an arrow. So you can move this arrow on double click. You can remove it also. And you can drag it to move in this way. So we want to split it from is and from policy. So you can arrange accordingly. These arrows you can arrange. And click on next, next and finish. It will split the data according to the given arrow. So in this way, you can work with the text to column. Again, like we have flash fill. This is also an amazing option in Excel. So like we have Rikas, we have Singh, we have Rohit, Arjun, Mohan, Gavima, Suchita, Roshan, Akansha, and so on. Now, with all the names, we just want to add at the rate gmail.com. You have to type vikas at the rate gmail.com. Just hit enter and select it again and drag it. And click on that point and select the flash fill and see. It will change all the name. So in this way, on a single click, you can apply a part uh, with uh, given data, with existing data. So we are just adding at gmail.com with all the names. We can use flash fill or flash fill. So this is very powerful and useful function. Again, like you can take this one also. So suppose we have this type of data and we just want to filter the name only, then type the cast, then drag, and again click on flash fill. See, you can fetch the data also. So we have a large value, and in this value, we just want to fetch some type of data, some type of value. So using flash fill, you can easily perform this type of operation. So it can identify the pattern of the data that you are fetching all the values before to add the rate. Then it will fetch all the values before to add the rate in all the cells. So this is flash fill. And in data, remove duplicate data validation, you can apply data validation also. So select the range. In data validation, you can select whole numbers for whole numbers, like between, not between, equal to, greater than, less than, in this type of validations are there. Select some values like minimum values 100. We want to put minimum value 100 and maximum value will be 500. So it will accept only the values of this range. So you can uh, give an input message also. Hi. Please input a value. And now error alert. There are three types of error alert. Stop, warning, and information. So like if you want to stop, then uh, select and type solve. Invalid value or valid value. And in this, way, in this way, you can provide a message. And click on OK. And now you can see if you select and sell of this area, then it will show an input message. And after, after giving some value, according to the condition, it will show the message. Like if uh, you are typing one, it will show the message invalid just because of we have given the range from 100 to 500. So it is showing an error. So in this way, you can apply the validation and to remove the validation, you can select the area and clear validation. So it will remove all the validations. Uh, sorry. Clear on and okay. So in this way, you can apply validation. We have another options are there in validation, but this is not possible in two hours just because of the Excel 
uh, the standard timing of Excel is 20 to 25 days training per, uh, per day, 22 hours. According to that, you can see 40 or 45 hours. So it is the standard timing duration of the Excel. So this is not possible. We can cover all the things in two hours. Uh, so we can move ahead and we can take what is analysis option that is scenario manager first of all and both you can later table. So in scenario manager, you can apply some scenarios for a selected area. Like in this area, we are providing some item and quantity and discount and item one, two, three, four. And according to the quantity, we are providing some discount, some type of discount. So uh, like quantity 100, 100, and in this case, 200 um, in this product, 250. So we have a discount, three, three, four, five. So this is a scenario, scenario-based values. We have a, a scenario one in which we are providing some type of this, some discount according to the quantity. So we have to add this scenario for the permanent. Uh, you can select the area, you can select the data and click on scenario manager. And here you can add it, click on add and type the name like this is scene one, scenario one and click on OK and OK. So you have added, you have added this scenario one. Now change the scenario. The second scenario is 500, quantity 500, 500. And in this case, we have 12 hours. So the discount is 10%. In this case, 14%. In this case, 15%. And in this case, 20%. So this is scenario two. Again, select it, click on scenario manager and add and in scene two, okay, okay, and close. Now, the third scenario is 800, 1000, 1000, and in this case, you have 1500. So the discount is 23, 24, 25, 20. See, this is scenario three. Select again, click on scenario manager, add, and scene three. Click on open. Okay. And close. Now, you can delete it also, and you can type another data. See. If you just want to check the scenario one, click on scenario manager, and select the scene one, and click on show. It will remove all the values and will show the scene one. And again, you can select scene two and you can select scene three. So in this way, you can save scenarios. You can save the data. And if you want to uh, print this uh, summary of this type of scenarios, you can click summary option. You can click summary option. And results in, in which cell you just want to print the result, click on OK. And you will get all the scenarios with all the values. So this is the summary of uh, all the scenarios. You can print it also. So in what if analysis, we have another option that is goal seek. In goal seek, you can achieve a value. Like we have a principal amount principal amount, the rate and time. So in principal amount, we have 5,000. In rate, we have 5% and in time, we have 3. Now you can apply simple interest and equal sign, simple interest. You have to multiply this one into this one. Into this one, divide by 100. Okay, 70. Now, suppose you just want to check what if we are providing uh, the time for four or, or rate we are providing six or 10 on same principal amount, what will be the simple interest? We just want to check. Then you can select 750 and you can select the goal seek option and you can check the condition. Like uh, we just want to make it uh, 750. We just want to make it 950. What if I just want to get SI 950? So we want to change the time. That means in which time for 5,000 with 5% 5 rate, the SI will be 950. 
in place of 750. So click on OK and you will get the result. For the 950 simple interest on 5000 principal amount and on 5% rate, it should be for 3.8 year. Same to check the percentage. Goal seek. Type 950. Okay. So you just want to check in what percent of a rate on a 5000 and uh, in three years we can get 950 in place of 750. So by changing cell, you have to select rate. So now principal amount is fixed, time is fixed, but rate we just want to check for 950 from 750. You can click on OK and you will see. You have to apply 6.3% rate on 5000 principal amount within three years to get 950 simple interest. In this way, you can check a target value. You can check a target value by applying a simple step. So if we have already applied a formula on a cell and we want to achieve, want to get some, we want to check some value on different scenario, on different conditions. So we can use goal C. So I think these all the things are clear. And if you have any doubt or question, guys, you can discuss with me. This is the last option. This was the last option. And now we just want to wind up. We are just going to wind up this class. But we have we have five minutes to discuss. You can discuss anything. Sir, we look up ka uh just a multiple pages, so use can we look up multiple pages to upko select karna data agar alag alag location pay hai, then you have to select. Like how many are the key we look up function laga. So up ya chatu ki data kissi do three page pay. Data may do three pages select can I say. So we look up and we have that this cell is that will be the lookup value and the table array is not going to be able to do it. Now you are saying that you have to select the data from the cell, you select the sheet and you have to select the data from the cell. So we have to select the data from the cell. Just put it in the form and what will you do after the form? We have to give the column index number, so we have to give the column index number and enter the comma zero. So here you can see NA coming, now you have to give the name. जैसे कि राम तो देखो राम के मार्क्स आ गए मोहन उनको मार्क्स आ गए 88 डेटा यहां से उठा रहा है मोहन 88 1 2 3 तो बस आपको सेलेक्ट करना है ओके सर ठीक है दूसरी शीट पे जाकर सेलेक्ट कर दो मैं ऑटोमेटिक ले लेता हूं एनी अदर क्वेश्चन आकांक्षा नो सर सर जब हम पावर भी यही यूज़ कर रहे हैं ना तो एक्सेल की क्या ज़रूरत है? एक्सेल की ज़रूरत ये है कि जैसे हर चीज़ को हम लोग पावर भी यही में नहीं कर सकते हमें हमेशा पावर भी यही की ज़रूरत नहीं होती पावर भी एक बड़ा टूल है ठीक है तो जहाँ पे स्मॉल स्केल मैंने स्टार्टिंग में आपको तो ऐसी जगहों पे पहली बात तो एक्सेल बहुत पॉपुलर हो चुका है सब कोई जानता है और दूसरा वहाँ पे स्मॉल स्केल का डेटा होता है बहुत ज़्यादा विजुअलाइजेशन नहीं करना है मैथमेटिकल ऑपरेशंस ज़्यादा होते हैं तो इसलिए एक्सेल पॉपुलर और भी में हम बहुत ज़्यादा लेवल पे मैथमेटिकल ऑपरेशन नहीं और एक्सेल बहुत ज्यादा पॉपुलर है ठीक है अब ऐसे नहीं है कि किसी के पास भी में लेकिन मतलब इसे बड़े स्केल में तो एक्सेल को वो नहीं कर सकते ना बिल्कुल बिल्कुल अब देखिए अगर किसी ने कार खरीद ली है तो इसका ये मतलब थोड़ी कि बाइक का कोई काम नहीं रहा बाइक का अपना इंपॉर्टेंस है कार का अपना इंपॉर्टेंस ना तो वो बड़े स्केल पे यूज होता है कार का मतलब पावर भी यूजफुल है पावरफुल है एक्सेल से पावरफुल है और बेटर है लेकिन हर जगह पे हम कार यूज नहीं कर सकते तो हमें जरूरत पड़ती है Okay, sir.